what I'm doing here and here, um, this might work, it might not. So what I'm doing is creating a furthest point. So this is the furthest point at the back, like the widest width, 66 and a half. Um, and then here, 63. I'll do another one here that gives me a 63. And then another here, it's gonna give me a 64, right to there. Um, and what's that, what that's gonna do is one, the this plane here is you know essentially the bottom of the car uh, and then I can set my foam sheets on that and slap them on and I, I know then that they're all nice and level to the bottom of the body and it also gives me a point so when I build out to however many layers I need for here and then you know an extra layer or two whatever for the hip on the back and on the front it gives me those reference points so that I don't have to just layer the whole thing up with like four or five layers, four or five layers on the other side. And then, then I have to carve this like, you know, shape to it. I can build it up generally to that shape and it's just less to carve. And it'll keep things a lot more symmetrical as I go left to right. If I don't have to you know, plow through that many more layers. on here um, again they're kind of set they're set in you know whatever distance they're relating to this so again my back one is set to this distance to its max this other one is set to the center distance and then it's sitting at this point you see how the flare comes in that's kind of where the flare starts so again kind of right here the front one on here it shows it about there um, so my body is different than this one this so this is a representation of the 206 as they were the 18 that were built so because mine is kind of a cut down body the story behind the car that I'm recreating is it was built like this and sold like this privately and then the guy eventually in 1969 it was rebodied a couple times but in 1969 it got kind of a cut down body work and that's why mine has none of this going on and the tail is open more like a 917 but the general shape of the nose and general shape of the body remained pretty similar to this so this is a good reference but again i have to go back in photos and and a lot of kind of guessing and you know scale rulering i guess and you know judging by you know the, the wheel is this big the tire should be this big versus my wheel and tire that are yay big um you know and then that would make this this big and so on and so forth um so yeah a lot of it is kind of guesswork and more proportions than than exact shape uh, but this is a good a good starting place a good reference this drawing actually is um a draft an original like obviously this is kind of computerized but it's a copy of an original draft for this car from 1966 that actually the original hangs in the Ferrari Museum um, and it's pretty common to find on the internet this if you search 206 SP um, sketch or plans whatever the really cool thing about these old race cars is that because they were handmade like all the bodywork was hand hammered aluminum and because of that, they each were slightly different, like left to right, front to back, lengths. So like the, the 156, the original 156s, some of the bodies were up to six, from what I can find, up to six inches different in length than other ones. So if you were to put them all next to each other and, and look at them and throw a tape measure across them, they were all different. Like you couldn't take the back end or front end of one of those cars and just throw it on a different chassis. It wouldn't fit. And it wouldn't fit by like quite a bit. So I love that. It actually gives me a lot of forgiveness in in creating this car because they had a lot of forgiveness in creating the 18 different cars that they did. And then again, in the specific one that I'm doing, they kind of kept that original body shape, but threw their own flair on it. And so now I can actually do the same without 
fully bastardizing the design because that's essentially what they did. Well, she's covered with foam, a couple layers. So I can see how I'm building out to my blocks here. Tomorrow I'll get some one inch foam to build out there. And then I'll begin to round this in. And then I can go this way with it. And then I'll build my fender flares and stuff. But for now, I'm bagged. I'm going to bed. So I'm in an empty office space that we have access to with a nice floor to cut this stuff out on. Um, I've got a full size rendering here of, of my smaller one you guys have seen. I have a friend who had a big printer and he printed this for me. I've got each view, but right now I'm working on the side profile. So I'm laying this out and kind of figuring out where my body shape differs from this body shape. So mine will kind of cut across here and then come down in a little spoiler there. So I want to cut this out so that I can lay it on the side of the foam. And then that'll give me a general reference of where to start smoothing things on the side profile. It's a good thing this foam is mostly black because the last time I did this, I used white foam and it was like it was snowing in the middle of the summer down the alley. So I'm kind of building out now to this line here. This will be the front kind of fender that will come over. So it kind of bulges out from here. You can see I put my paint on my one inch and that brings it out to the maximum of the side lines. So. Anything that hangs over, like hangs over the front or the top, I just cut it off. You can see how I've got this now, obviously flared more than this. And then I have a rear flare that's going to start about here and go back to this plane here. So I'm going to add another layer of the two inch from here to about here. There. It looks completely like a big block of nothing. I'm doing like this, uh, it's flat. The nose will actually come out here like this. Um, I'm doing it like this kind of for two reasons. One, so I can actually reach all of this while I work on it from the front. And two, because the nose is kind of uh, kind of going to duck in like this. I don't know, there's a lot to it. It's going to be all foam. So what I'll do is I'll just layer up and layer up and layer up and layer up to about here. And then I can work on that kind of separately after. So stuck my cut out on there or just kind of pinned it on with some nails to kind of see my heights and things that's why I added this block in the front so that'll get smoothed all in obviously a lot of this will have to get taken down you can see that so a lot of that will come down
That just took me longer to clean up than it did to do. <laughs> okay, you can, you can see I kind of skipped ahead here. Um, I should have recorded smoothing this, but I didn't, sorry. Um, basically, I did it with a little of this, what you saw, a little of that, a um, little of that. Um, but yeah, smooth it all. <clears throat> Filled a uh, couple spots that I went a little too deep on. Just filled with, with some spray foam. Um, got some stuff over here that I went a little deep, but it won't matter because that's all going to get rounded. Um, I sprayed it with, I misted the whole thing with yellow spray paint so I could see my low spots. You can see stuff like this, how they're a little bit yellow. So I misted the whole thing and then went over it by hand with my with my big block here and my 40 grit paper on it. Um, and then I can check this. I can check this still now again because my thing is level. I can check this and see if I'm straight on my stop as I go. So as I go down, you know, as I go down it. So it's pretty good. It won't really matter because the only bit that really matters here is gonna be is gonna be the middle. So now that I have this top profile here, now what I can do is um, I've cut a groove into here about an inch deep. And then what I'll do is go from my center and kind of go into that area and round the top portion there. you can see I can tell it's pretty even by this you can see my layers the different layers so these curves and things kind of show me that I'm pretty even there and then I've got a string line here for center right now
Okay, this is where this becomes really, really useful. Um, again, this is like the like the one that I had for the side. This is a top view of the car of a 206 SP that again I had my friend print for me in full size. So this will now help me determine. So I cut it in half down the center. So this will help me determine the width of my fenders and my flares and kind of where they need to be.